Hey everybody, Alexis up here with the Daily Racing Forum to go over a pick three sequence with y'all for this Saturday, August 17th at Saratoga. It looks like we are hopefully finally going to get some dry weather conditions for racing, at least on Saturday. And there's a couple really nice stakes races on the card. So this pick three sequence starts with race nine, the grade two Lake Placid Stakes going a mile and the 16th on the turf for three-year-old fillies. She feels pretty will be the favorite, and I think she is the most vulnerable favorite in this pick three sequence. So I'm going to be trying to beat her with a price. Chad Brown has won this race five out of the last six years, and he has three entered in here, all of which I'm using. So his first one is number two, Grayosh, with an H1 morning line. If that morning line holds true, this will be the longest we've gotten on her since debut. She's had some trouble early with clipping heels and losing her rider, but as soon as she broke her maiden, Chad put her up against graded company in the grade two wonder again, where she was outkicked, but still belonged there. Then she almost won a tough allowance race last out here at Saratoga, losing by just a nose to Proctor Street, who is the number nine in here today. I just really like that she's continued to improve even after adversity, and I don't think we've seen the best from her yet. Chad's next contender is the number five Spaladay at 12 to one morning line. She's coming off a win in the boiling spring stakes at Monmouth last month where she put up an 85 buyer. She's been two to one or less in her last four starts and has won half of them. She's longer today because this is definitely going to be a class test for her. She'll have the best chance if there is a fast pace set. I'm not sure that's going to happen, but Regardless, she's got one of the best aboard to try to get her to the winner's circle with Frankie DeTori taking them out. The final horse from Chad's barn is the number 10 dynamic pricing at six to one odds. She won the grade two Edgewood two back over a yielding turf at Churchill before disappointing last out in the grade one Belmont Oaks. However, she did get an awkward start that day and today's shorter distance may just better suit her. She looks fit and ready, so if she can repeat Back to her Edgewood performance, I don't see why today can't be the day for her to find the winner's circle again. In addition to Chad's horses, I'm going to also use the number six, Le Rays. This horse was bred in France and um, has raced in France up until this point. She won her last two outs in decent stakes company at six and a half furlongs and a mile. So this is going to be a lot of firsts for her. Uh, first time in the U.S., first time stretching out over a mile but she did outperform her odds quite a bit in those last two starts. And while it's always possible she'll need some experience stateside before finding the winner's circle, I think she also has the potential to roll over this field with her clothes and is definitely worth including at 10 to one odds. The next race is the feature. It's the grade one Alabama for three-year-old fillies going a mile and a quarter on the dirt. The first horse I'll be using is the number four, Just Basking. She's by Arrogate, and the breeding rating on Timeform US for this distance and surface is a 100 out of 100. So you can't get any better than that. Um, she's had a very impressive step up last out at Prairie Meadows in the Iowa Oak Stakes, improving her previous buyer by 14 points uh, with a 90 and winning by almost five lengths. Her blowout race prior to that, where she won by almost eight lengths, was a mile and a quarter. So she's one of only two horses in here. Um, and the only one, in my opinion, that's a contender in here to have gone this distance. Uh, this will 100% be a class test, but to me, it looks like she has the raw talent and deserves to be here. Number six, Miss Justify has tactical speed, winning from on the lead, setting very fast fractions to back at Churchill, and then coming off the pace last out at Saratoga. This will be a distance test as well as a class test for her, but... You know, her biggest advantage is probably the pace setup as she should be the easy early leader if she wants it in a field that really doesn't have a ton of pace. Finally, I'll include number seven, Candide, who will be the favorite in here. She's only won one of her last four starts, but she's been going up against Torpedo Anna, Leslie's Rose, and just FYI, so the best of the best. And she earned a 99 buyer two back in the Ladies' Secret Stakes, which, to be fair, may be a questionable figure, but... It's so far superior to the rest in here. It still makes a huge impact. I do think it's a negative for her that her last two out have been against fields of four. Um, and I hope we can beat her in here with one of these longer prices. But with her performances, I'm just not going to leave her off the ticket. Race 11 is a starter allowance going a mile on the dirt for three-year-olds and up. And I like two in here. I like the number three, Yo Daddy. Three to one morning line. Um, got second in this condition last out by only a length. 
he put up the second best lifetime buyer of anybody in here during that race. And when I was watching the replay, he just looked really good. He looked like he had more in the tank. And I think he absolutely fits in here. Also, we'll be using the number seven unlimited potential. He will be the favorite. And this really, truly was a tough call for me on whether or not to include him. If I look at his numbers, there's no question. I have to include him and he's going to win the race. But when I look at his story, there are so many questions. <laughs> Pletcher Rapoli just totally dumped him last race for a $16,000 tag. And they spent $750,000 on him in 2021. And while, yeah, he wasn't the superstar they clearly were hoping for, he was absolutely paying his bills. Um, and Brooke has made in a nice $100,000 made in special weight at Keeneland. Um, so... I know money is no object for these connections and he may just not have been up to their program standards and they thought it was time to cut bait, but dropping him in for that little makes me wonder, like, is there something they know that we don't know? But regardless, I have to look at the information that I do have. And he dominated that claiming race being geared down, still winning by five lengths with a 92 buyer and now comes back less than a month later. So I'm assuming everything's fine. Um, hopefully these connections got him for a steal and I'm curious to see. I think this race will be very telling for how true his name really is for him. So this pick three sequence is $24 for a dollar. Hopefully we can land a big price in the first leg and then get a good medium shot in the second leg and make some nice cash to roll into next week's Traverse. So good luck, everybody, in all of your wagers, and especially if you play this pick three with me.